Hey friends, what's up? Ash here. Welcome back to Gen Sense. Hope you're doing well. Today we're talking about fragrances on both sides uh, of the spectrum as far as how much women in general seem to like them. The one side of the spectrum, you have fragrances that more often than not, uh, women are not gonna, not gonna appreciate very much. Actually, I guess you could just say people in general might find them to be off-putting, divisive, whatever you want to say. And the fragrances that by and large are actually respected in the fragrance community. And I do want to say, I just want to put it out there that I don't hate them. I mean, one of them I'm not a huge fan of, but the other ones I don't hate. But a lot of people have told me when uh, I was wearing them that they didn't appreciate them. Keep that opinion to yourself, okay? You don't like my fragrance? You don't got to tell me? hurt my feelings. Then on the other side of the spectrum, we have fragrances that people, ladies, just everyone in general, by and large, seem to really like. And actually, the fragrances on that side of the spectrum we're gonna talk about, most of those are not highly regarded in the fragrance community. See how that goes? It's like Wall Street bets. Somebody tells you to buy a stock, that means you better be selling it, and vice versa. Let's jump into it, let's check these out. And I do want to remind you guys of those codes at maxaroma.com and twistedlily.com. The code is GENTS10. That will save you 10% off your order. At luckyscent.com, the code is currently GENTS2022. And that also will save you 10% off your order. And that code, I'm sure at some point in the near future, will be changing again. But for now, that's what it is. So where do we start with the fragrance that is hated or fragrance that is loved? First off, uh, let's do a hated fragrance. We're gonna kick things off with this one, Bulgari Man Terra Essence, which I actually like. I think this smells good. But for most people out there, this is not gonna be a very good compliment pulling fragrance if that's what you're after. This is more that type of fragrance that will have somebody questioning your sanity. What are you wearing? Why are you wearing that? Why would you do that? It is a bit earthy, has kind of a soil facet to it. And uh, yeah, you go around to most people and ask them, hey, would you want to wear a fragrance that has a soil accord to it? They're going to look at you like, no, dirt? Why would I do that? Yeah, that's kind of how the earthiness in this fragrance comes across, smelling a bit like soil. Of course, that's not all that's in here. You have citrus in here. It has a bit of a similarity to Guilty Absolute and Terre d'Hermes, like bits and pieces from those two fragrances put together. It doesn't smell exactly like either one of those. As I said, personally, to me, Terra Essence smells really good. But to most of the ladies, I've had smell that since it's come out. Um, not as good. Let's go for a compliment puller next, something that uh, women in general love very much. Giorgio Armani, Aqua de Jo, Absolute. Yes, Absolute. I think this one, uh, at least uh, to my memory, is the fragrance in the line that got dumped on the most when it came out. Aqua de Jo Profumo, yeah, a lot of people like that. Aqua de Jo Profundo, yeah, a lot of people like that. Profundo Lights. A little more under the radar, but got a good welcoming. Eau de Parfum, good also. Absolute. What is this crap? It smells like Invictus. That's how a lot of people approached it. But guess what, my friends? Absolute. If you're just looking for compliments for a fragrance that most people are going to be drawn to and think it smells fantastic, that has very good versatility, you're going to want to check this out. Back to the other side of things, something people don't like as much. Encre Noir from Lalique. Yeah, another one that I think is awesome. One of the best bang for your buck fragrances that I think you can buy. This stuff for $30 or less at discounters, ah, it's exquisite. Dark and woody, the vetiver here is fantastic. Really good stuff and a passing similarity to Chanel's Sycamore. And I have actually pulled compliments wearing Encre Noir in the past. So it's possible, I know, because it's happened to me. I know it's real because I've seen it. <laughs> and yet, even with that, uh, it's still not a very safe blind buy and a fragrance that most people, uh, specifically women, don't seem to be in love with. Still though, I can highly recommend that fragrance in general, that stuff rocks. Not a safe line by though. Okay, hey, uh, back over to the side of uh, compliment pulling fragrances that people seem to love. Bad boy, Carolina Herrera. It's the original, the Eau de Toilette. 
For me personally, uh, Le Parfum is more interesting, but if you're just looking for that, that fragrance that has ease of use to it, the Eau de Toilette is gonna be a bit better. This one has that warm sweetness from Tonka that's really prominent. You've probably smelled it 15,000 times in other men's fragrances, but it is so easy to wear. It's great for fall and winter and early spring it has this chocolatey feeling from cacao in here, a very modern man's fragrance. A lot of people might say it's, you know, too generic for them. It doesn't do anything new, but if you're just looking for something that is going to get the job done, a perfect date night fragrance, a big compliment puller. Check that out. Swinging back to the other side, Tom Ford Noir Eau de Parfum. Now this one on a personal level, uh, it's probably my least favorite. Yeah, actually definitely my least favorite to wear out of the side of fragrances that women don't really care for. And it's not that the fragrance is bad, because it's not. Quality here is what you would expect from Tom Ford. It's a bit of a bold fragrance, frankly, for a guy to wear. It has good performance. It has this sultry, powdery, dark floral tone to it. Got a good amount of patchouli in here, some animalic touches to it. And this fragrance, unfortunately, is out of everything that I own, somehow one of my least worst complimented fragrances. If that's even a thing. It's not really a good way to describe it. Those situations where somebody acknowledges you have something on and you think it's gonna go well, and then they tell you how much they hate it. I have had that happen with Noir Eau de Parfum, I think more than anything else I own, which is crazy, and, and a lot of that is possibly just bad luck on my side of things, but yeah. And I know for a fact there are gonna be people that comment and they say, nah, dude, Noir Eau de Parfum, I get so many compliments, it's different. It is bold, like you said, and it works so well for me. People just think it, you know, it's amazing. It makes me stand out. I know that. I know it works well for some people, but every time I wear this stuff, it's like I, I get the worst reactions. Back to the uh, side of, of fragrances that people love. This is an easy one. Sauvage Eau de Toilette. Now, of course, Sauvage is everywhere. You know that. I know that, we all know that, your mom knows that, your grandma knows that. So it's not really a surprise, is it? Yeah, Sauvage, a compliment puller, wow, go figure. Really going out on a limb there, I know. But it has to be said, even though a lot of people will uh, you know, take shots at it and say that it's this, that, or the other thing, it's too loud, it's too aggressive, it's too grating, it's whatever. At the end of the day, Sauvage Eau de Toilette, if you are after positive attention, is one of the absolute best fragrances, period, niche, indie, or designer that you can have in your collection. Yeah, you may not be able to appreciate it for what it is. Maybe uh, you're into more artistic fragrances and more power to you, but um, there's no denying how well this stuff works. Bergamot, Ambroxan, Pepper, Lavender, some of the notes in the scent. Metallic, fresh, very powerful. Back to a fragrance that people don't clamor for, Gucci Guilty. Absolute. Now, when this came out, it was a bit of a darling as far as um, more critical people go. It was heralded as this, this change of pace for Gucci, this very challenging, a kind of out there designer fragrance. Breaking the mold, going against the grain, doing something different. It's a strong leather scent. Some people would say it has a medicinal smell, reminiscent of Band-Aids, particularly in the opening of the fragrance. It is quite strong. It's a definite cool weather fragrance. Very, very masculine as well. This is the type of fragrance that will absolutely set you apart. And I, for one, when it came out, thought it smelled awesome. So different uh, compared to all the other fragrances in the Gucci Guilty line. It's like a complete and total outlier. Like it doesn't really make sense when you compare it to the original Gucci Guilty or Gucci Guilty Black or you know, pretty much every single other Gucci Guilty flanker out there. So yeah, it doesn't make a ton of sense, but holy crap, did I think it smelled good. Challenging, different, but good. And yet when this was released in stores, oh, it did not get a good reaction. Back when this came out, 
Uh, I was friends with a few other guys who were in the fragrance community, both online and also that had uh, YouTube channels. And they worked at stores like Macy's and they would regale me with tales about how horrifically this was doing in stores. How, you know, when it first came out, of course, people would come up to the fragrance counters and they'd spray it on a tester strip and be like, check out this new Gucci. And people would just, oh, no, no. And just skedaddle. They didn't have any interest in this at all. And uh, apparently, uh, as time went on, not long after launch, they pretty much pulled it off the counters and they were like, yeah, we're not gonna, we're not gonna try to push this anymore. It's just not happening. So a major flop as far as the release goes, unfortunately, but yeah, you can spray that on for somebody and uh, chances are if they're hardcore into fragrances, you're gonna have a much higher likelihood that they're going to appreciate it if it's just a, a normal person. Uh, maybe not so much. Fragrances people love. One Million Elixir from Paco Rabanne, the new one million or newest anyway, as of this video. Quite a sweet scent, a little bit reminiscent of uh, some of the stronger with you fragrances, even though it doesn't have uh, any notes in there like caramel or toffee or glazed chestnut or anything like that. It still does have a similarity to that line. Quite sweet off the top, actually potentially overwhelmingly sweet, depending on uh, how averse you are to fragrances that have a lot of sweetness. So you've got an apple vanilla combo here with a bit of rose as well. As it dries down, the stuff smells awesome in the air. Actually, when I first smelled it, I was a little iffy on it. But as time went on, grew to appreciate it a lot. And apparently everybody else did too. Surprisingly good compliment puller, that one. Or I guess it shouldn't be a surprise. I mean, one million is a pretty huge line, so. Last one on the fragrances that uh, ladies oftentimes will dislike. Bentley for Men Intense, big hype beast, uh, fragrance that I think, once again, just like Ancre Noir, is great for the price point that you can pick it up for. Smells similar to a couple different niche fragrances out there at a much more affordable price. Uh, those fragrances are Chambre Noir by Olfactive Studio and Idole de Louban Eau de Parfum. So it's gonna get you you know, that style of scent. This is gonna be another one that is very masculine, strong, you know, not a lot of sweetness here. That is one thing you see in common with uh, a lot of these fragrances that maybe ladies don't like quite as much. They're a little more hardcore, earthier, more leathery, no sweetness, no freshness. And then on the side uh, where people do gravitate toward them, they are sweet. They are fresh a lot of times. Great scent with a nice smokiness to it as well. Bentley from an Intense is one where you're gonna see a lot of heaping of praise on the scent, again, for that quality uh, versus the price you pay. But then equally, you will see a lot of people who bought the fragrance and then were infinitely disappointed that every time they wore it, other people didn't like it. I, I do like it though, it's good. Last one that people love, Elysium. Parfum Cologne, Rosa Parfum. This one is really just made to be exactly what it looks like, a high-end blue fragrance. So a lot of versatility, a lot of mass appeal, compliment factor. Nice and classy, like you would expect a Raja Parfum fragrance to be. Good amount of citrus in here. It's got this sparkly effervescence to it as well, like a lot of Raja Parfum fragrances do. Very fresh, an awesome scent to wear to the office, or honestly, just whenever you want. Priciest one here though, that is the drawback. Though for a Raja Parfum fragrance, because that's part of their Parfum Cologne collection, it's actually affordable compared to their other stuff. So there we go, five fragrances that in general women hate and five that in general women love. Although of course there are absolutely people out there that will smell uh, Bulgari Manterra Essence for example and be like, oh, fantastic. And then they'll smell Sauvage Eau de Toilette and be like, ugh. Disgusting. There is no one size fits all when it comes to fragrances. All right, guys, I'm out of here. Thank you for hanging with me. Stay safe out there and I'll see you tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you guys later.